Good evening, my friends. It's VJ Franz K. I'm going to unbox these Sharpie brush pens. It's a new thing that I saw at Target. And so I was a fan of the Sharpie stained brush pens. So I thought these might be a new uh, permutation of that. So let's take a look. They were $19 at Target for 12 pens. And it comes with this sort of pleather uh, travel case, which is kind of nice, even though I don't know if that's really necessary to charge us extra for that, because, you know, we probably have an art case or something else that we already uh, store things in. For best performance, store pens horizontally. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I wonder why they... They specifically mention that. Maybe um, something to do with the ink reservoir. I see. I guess I'm not supposed to. How am I, oh, yeah. Like that, and then like this. Okay. So here they are. It looks like a new style of marker. Looks kind of different. And uh, this pleather case, it seems to be. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Even though. You know, assuming that you will buy more of these later on uh, when they dry up or lose their tip, um, it may be sort of redundant to have more than one case. So I'll try the green first off, and I have I have this deluxe printer paper that I like, and also regular paper, and then Bristol board underneath. Look at that. Okay, it's kind of a it's kind of a very fine point if you can see that. Um, it's narrow, more narrow than the um, stained Sharpie pens are. That that goes down to a really fine line. That's that's impressive, actually. How narrow the tip can get, and then I guess the maximum width maximum width is about that wide so they aren't that wide but uh, maybe it'll be best for small detailed drawings so just to be able to to be get able to get those fine textures and then see how it looks on the printer paper Wow that does make the ink a bit more rich in color. You can see on the, the custom printer paper, it uh, stays on the top, stays on the surface of the, um, stays on the surface of the paper instead of sinking down in. So now I will flip this over and I'll try the red. You know, that is a nice little case, but you know, like I said, you won't want to necessarily buy multiple uh, duplicates of that case because all good pens uh, run out of ink and get dull, but that case will last for a long time. Maybe I'll just put other markers in it if these run out. And... That is a nice line. I like, I like the red. Um, I think that green could be a bit richer. And when the red crosses over the green, there's a little bleed there, but not too much, not too bad. That's pretty good in terms of the color staying where it should on the page if you color over the top of other markers. That's how we like it. Into this thing, try the blue. See what is the blue like? I still wish that marker companies would get the idea that um, it's good to have two black markers with every 
a set of color markers instead of just one black marker because uh, if you're doing comics and that sort of artwork you're going to be using a lot of black ink for all the outlines so yeah you want you want more black ink and you'll want nice sharp points it's kind of interesting how the blue is crossing over those two other colors there it's kind of beating off the red if you notice yeah that's interesting um, even though if you're using your markers wide, wisely you may not be coloring over other markers you might just know where to put down one single color or more advanced marker work you could be overlaying multiple colors to do shading or gradations or other uh, features like that so just depends a lot of the stuff that I do is outlining and then I will go back and color in Photoshop that is the common uh, 21st century artist workflow at least for this part of the 21st century we don't know what things will turn out like later this is a, a classy design it's it's simple it's it's to the point no pun intended um, the caps go on snugly they don't click on like the stained sharpie markers and maybe I'll bring out a stained Sharpie just to compare them for you. But uh, it's a good design, and ultimately, I like the clicky caps of the stained Sharpies, but that is a design flaw for them because if the clicky caps get damaged, then you are kind of stuck. You can't effectively cover the markers if their caps get too damaged and uh, either the cop the the caps will pop off caps will pop off when you're carrying them in your pocket or something that's a pretty nice overlay between the yellow and the blue there there's almost no bleed over nice so uh, but um, or, or the caps would just completely not be usable and then the marker is basically done for it'll dry out without being covered but the clever workaround for that is you save the extra caps when your markers dry up legitimately and then you are ready for the next set of markers when they need a new cap to replace the old click cap you can just switch those uh, caps out and at least get a little bit extra life out of your markers there. Pretty good color so far. I think the dark green is kind of the uh, weak point of the set. And uh, with markers, you will notice that there's always a few colors that you really like the look of and other colors that you don't. And so the wise person may have a couple sets of markers around that they could uh, use together on a project. Yeah, the a light green here is so is so light. It's not well. Uh, depending on what you're coloring, it could be good to be able to shade a tree from this light green right down to this dark green put them side by side and let that be like a shading gradation or something so you know but this this does seem a little bit too light take a look at the blue just a few more here and I will uh, move these aside so we can see some of the the Bristol board on the back. 
to see what it does there. This sky blue, it's quite light in color. Um, it seems darker on the regular paper, that's interesting. Know your papers, know your markers, know how they work together. Or if you're drawing on some other surface that's not paper at all, you really have to ask those questions because some surfaces will just completely bead marker ink off them. You won't be able to effectively draw on them at all. So uh, plan ahead, right? understand uh, what you can do you could stick a sticker or a piece of tape on that surface and then uh, decorate that tape or sticker or whatever you had moment of truth the black important for outlining and uh, shapes and things like that. It appears to be good enough, but perhaps it could be darker. I have to take a close look at it really know and the other thing is um, colors may change as they dry so um, as the ink dries it will get less shiny so if the shine of some work is distracting you it may get better later on but um, the colors may get brighter are less rich in color after the ink dries. So just um, plan ahead a bit and like I said with 20th century art you often get a chance to um, scan your work and then put it in Photoshop for the final coloration. But I know this from experience because I I have a lot of nice art markers, but I also just enjoy drawing randomly anywhere I go. And when I go to uh, just casually draw, I usually just bring regular paper and maybe cheap markers. So I don't have to worry about them getting lost or stolen or, you know, just otherwise destroyed. So, um, let's see, we'll try the purple. The purple. And then there's two different oranges. That's kind of interesting. One is a sort of salmon pink orange. And then the other one, oh, interesting. Look at that. That purple is super dark. It's so dark. That's the other problem is that sometimes colors are so dark that you can't, um, you can't totally differentiate them from black. So this this purple is kind of along that line, but oh, it's still good. I wish it weren't quite that dark. Okay, well let's try that pink, since we're talking about these. Um, yeah, it seems to be a well-designed marker, less flashy than the stained Sharpies, but also um, probably more efficient. So who knows? Maybe they listened to me, right? They're watching my videos? No, probably not. But hopefully various people did mention to them the 
design flaws of the stained Sharpies as well as the goodness. I still think I might prefer the stained Sharpies over these. Just something about them. Um, they're a little wider. The tips are wider than these. So perhaps putting the two sets of markers together would be just right because then you would be able to um, get thick and thin and the two sets of ink would sort of give you two takes of the main primary colors. It's hard to find stained Sharpies in the full color spectrum. Usually you don't uh, see that sold even though we are so lucky in terms of markers these days because of the internet just spoils you with all the possibilities of markers that you can order though you may have now that's a nice pink it's a very rich pink it's almost a purple pink so put the pink and the purple together look at that that's a nice possible color gradation for you to do something like flowers or um, I guess combine it with the red and you could do strawberry or cherries or things like that so um, yeah moving on to we'll try this the colors aren't labeled as to what they are but they do have this little guideline on the back as well as obviously the cap Oh, interesting. All right, this, the lighting in this room is a little bit bad for me to see the colors. This, there's glare on this uh, printer paper. Oh, well. Just sort of drawing a design here, but to get, give you the, the feel of it. Um, interesting. It isn't as much salmon pink as I thought it would be. It's a sort of orangish red almost. So that is another good color. Just two more. Go to the orange here. Interesting. It is quite similar to the other orange but that's okay you can use look at that a nice sort of gradation there between the lines so if you're clever you'll be able to um, make a nice gradation between those yeah it's still still sort of uh, comes to my eye as an orange red as much as it is an orange and here is the brown 